thanks for watching. Today I'm going to talk about occupancy cost in retail underwriting. So here's a situation. You're considering investing in a retail center. You like the demographics. You like the center itself, uh, the layout, uh, the, the traffic, etc. Uh, but you want to understand better what's the likelihood that the tenants that are currently occupying the center will renew when their leases come due. And you know that's a, that's a very important consideration because really the the economics of the deal rely on uh, having a, a reasonably good renewal probability, right? So an important metric for understanding the likelihood that a tenant will stay or not uh, is the tenant's occupancy cost and the tenant's sales per square foot. And so I'm going to talk about how to calculate uh, those values. Uh, this is pretty simple math. Uh, it's going to be fairly intuitive, um, but I'll show you how I think about this and, and then you can implement it in your own underwriting. So here I have a real simple rent roll. I have my larger tenants separated from my smaller tenants. And the reason I do that is sometimes these larger tenants, uh, they're, able to get, they're able to get different, um, negotiate better terms. Uh, they oftentimes have uh, sales that are, are quite different on a per square foot basis <clears throat> from the smaller inline tenants. And so I like to separate them out. Now you'll notice in my inline tenants, there's, a, there's one, one tenant in particular that I would likely then pull out as well because it's skewing our analysis here. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, this is a one tab model. I'll include in the description a link to go and download this model so that you can either uh, take it and adapt it for your own needs or learn from the basic formulas that, that we have in here. But basically, uh, let's just start with this first row. Uh, I've dropped in the tenants. This should actually be blue. This should be blue as well. All right, so I have uh, the suite and the tenant name. I have the square footage for the tenant, and that's important. I then drop in the base rent, right? So what is what is this tenant paying currently in rent on a you know on an annual basis? Uh, so the formula you'll see here is I just I know that I'm, that they're paying 14 bucks a foot, so I take their their square foot and times by 14. But you may have just a big round annual number for base rent. You go ahead and do that. Next, you're going to drop in their CAM reimbursements. So I have here uh, three different reimbursement types. Some centers have even more. Uh, and so I just kind of lump all those other non-CAM reimbursement, non-real estate tax reimbursement into this other bucket. Uh, but we drop in what this tenant is paying in CAM reimbursements, in real estate tax reimbursements, and then other. And in this center, in this case, I'm assuming there are no other uh, reimbursements. And then finally, any percentage rent that the tenant is paying. And I'm not going to get into what percentage rent is and how it's calculated, natural breaks, etc. cetera. Uh, that, that's for another time in a different video. But um, if the tenant has some uh, agreement with the landlord to pay an amount uh, based on outsized sales at, at this particular location, then that would be considered percentage rent. And, and you'll have that in your financial statements as you're underwriting this, and you drop in percentage rent. And then the thinking is these five categories here, these five uh, expense items to the tenant constitutes the total occupancy cost that the tenant is incurring at this particular location. The final thing I'm going to drop in is the annual sales. Now, if, if you are the owner of this building, I sure hope that when you're signing leases, you're requiring the tenant to report their sales at the end of each year. Even if you don't have uh, percentage rent, this is an important metric. Why? Uh, first off, you want to know what the likelihood that the tenant will uh, renew, uh, meaning you want to understand how well the tenant is performing at this location. That may drive your management decisions. It may give you advanced warning so you can go to the tenant, maybe renegotiate uh, some of their occupancy costs, bring them down, make, make the tenant more likely to stay. But it even or as important, uh, at, one, at some point in time, you're going to need to refinance or finance the property. You may want to sell. And this is an important metric that future buyers or lenders are going to look at to understand the, the health of the center. So you'll, you'll want to make sure that in 
uh, your leases with these tenants, you have a clause that requires them to report their sales. So here I have our nine tenants. In the case of our Whole Thumb Grocery, uh, they're, they made just shy of $32 million in gross sales at this center, which then calculates, and here's uh, the formula. It's, again, uh, simple math, gross sales divided by sales uh, or total um, square footage that the tenant is occupying, and that gives us our sales per square foot. Now, in this case, what does $578 a foot mean? Well... Green Street has some great analysis on sales per square foot, and I'll include a link to some of that analysis in the blog post attached to this. But um, different retail tenant types have their you know, preferred sales uh, per square foot range. So in the case of a grocer, 578 is not so bad. Uh, if they're sub 400, uh, and again, this depends on the market. It depends on their total, their occupancy cost percentage and, and all that. We'll get into. But uh, if it's sub 400, sub 350 uh, for a grocer, uh, you might be a little worried. Uh, if it's above five, 600, um, seven, 800, it's, you know, that's pretty good. But then you have to also look at how is this store performing relative to their average across their entire portfolio. So with our uh, specialty grocer whole thumb here, they may average 900 bucks a foot across their, their, all their stores in the country. And so 578 doesn't look so well. So it's all relative. Uh, and that's, you know, you'll get into additional analysis. But this here is, this is telling you, whole thumb's doing 578 a foot, or they did this most recent year. Uh, that's either good or bad. You know, that's up to you to decide. So that's that's one metric. The other metric, and equally as important, is this occupancy cost percentage metric. And so, for instance, uh, let's take yeah, let's see, our Elm Barrel here. So they're only doing 471 a foot. Uh, good, bad, maybe I don't know. Uh, you would have to look at how it compares to their peers and and to their their broader portfolio, but let's imagine that this isn't as good as we'd like. However, when we look at it on an occupancy cost percentage, the total amount that they have to spend every year towards occupying this space, base rent plus reimbursements plus their percentage rent, is less than 5.5%. And uh, again, um, there's some analysis out there for what's good and what's not. It just depends. Uh, but 5.5% is not so bad. And so while their sales may not be as robust as you know, maybe we'd like, their occupancy cost is low. And that, that tells us that the rent they're paying, the re reimbursements they're required to pay, it isn't killing them at this, this center. And they you know, they're very well may renew when, when the time comes. So. Uh, this calculation here, we have the sales per square foot. Again, gross sales divided by tenants, tenant uh, or uh, uh, net rentable area. We have occupancy costs, which is the sum of all of the costs that, that they incur for uh, be occupying this space. And then we have occupancy cost percentage, which is simply the gross sale, the occupancy cost divided by the gross sales, or what percentage of their gross sales uh, is the occupancy cost. And so with that, uh, let's come down. I have the anchor space. I wanted to just point out here this tenant orange. All right, so they are a tech company. Uh, and they have this small 5,000 square foot space. And they're doing $4,500 a foot in sales. And it's really skewing the, the average of all of our inline space, right? So it takes our average per square per square foot sales for our inline space, and it's bumping it up to 1342. And so more than likely, you'll want to pull that out and see what happens. Assume we pull that out, now our inline space is doing 630 a square foot, which is still decent and on, a, on an occupancy cost basis, 491. Uh, really, the only tenant we have to worry about, it looks like, is this GameStar, where they're only doing $199 a foot. Their occupancy cost is above 15%. That's something that, that might worry us. Um, but again, you notice, so let me put them back in, uh, with orange, they're skewing the numbers. And so you might want to pull them out, have their own category there. Uh, and you'll see that. A jewelers are another example here. Uh, our Yogi Jewelry, uh, they tend to do high numbers on a uh, per square foot basis um, just because of the type of products that they sell. And so 
you might pull them out to get a better idea of how the, the, the balance of our inline space is doing with those tenants pulled out. So there you have it, uh, occupancy cost uh, 101, if you will. Um, again, I'll have this uh, Excel workbook available to download and, and play around uh, with your, for yourself. And thanks for watching.